Hey guys, Ryan Wall for Life here today and I'm back with another video. Now today's video I'm going to be reacting to uh, the Tanner Nations, a video called Goku vs Superman. Now the Tanner Nation, some of you guys might not know who he is, but um, he commented on my channel like, I, I don't know, I don't remember, like I think a couple of days ago, maybe a week ago, he mentioned to me that hey, on my uh, Goku vs Superman video, you know, Death Battles when I was doing the reaction, he mentioned like, hey, I'm planning on doing a Goku vs Superman video years later. I'm gonna, you know, drop it out. I want you to check it out. So I was like, you know what, cool. I'll wait for it to drop out and I'll check it out and, you know, I'll do my reaction video to, uh, to it and, like, talk about uh, his points. Or are they fair? Are they inaccurate? Or whatever. And I went to his channel to check out. He has a couple of videos. He doesn't have that much. I think he has, like, five or six videos on his channel. And... I didn't see the new video coming out, so he's probably still working on it, but I have seen, I do see on his channel uh, a video of his he has up called Goku vs. Superman, and that's what we're going to be reacting to today, but he's done this before, but this was like all the way back in 2015, and he said he's going to be dropping out a new one, so I will be sure to check that one out when it does drop out, but for right now, I'm going to be checking out his original one and seeing what his points were, you know, around like seven years ago, which... They probably have changed now and he probably has a better, more updated and more accurate version nowadays. Especially with, you know, Dragon Ball Super and stuff and all the stuff that came from Dragon Ball Super. But yeah, let's just check it out. I'm not taking into account what's canon and what's not. I disagree with the dead so also be using the same characters as them, aka GT Goku and Post Crisis Superman. This is in the video for you if you have a problem with that. I do not want, I do not own any of the person here. Okay. Superman's stats will be given first as he, his are straightforward unlike Goku's. True. I do have that big problem with Dragon Ball and anime in general is they're not straightforward with their, you know, feats and stuff. A lot of time they usually go through like statements and stuff and then you have to find out, you know, go through if the statements are correct. And the feats itself, it's like usually they focus more on the battle itself. So they want to make the battle look cool and powerful but they don't focus on the, uh, their accomplishments through their feats alone. Whereas in comic books, that's more the main focus. It's not about the, the fight looking cool. That's why I think a lot of times when I watch like comic book movies and stuff, or animation stuff, usually it's uh, lackluster compared to anime. Because anime really goes above and beyond when it comes to the action, but not as much as when it comes to the feats. Whereas, you know, comic books like Superman and stuff, they're more focusing on his, you know, physical prowess instead of his, you know, hand-to-hand -hand fights. It's, let's be honest, he's not that great of a combatant. Oh lord, use this. Yeah. Superman's strength lifting. Superman has lifted the cover on a red screen. 5.66. Superman's strength punching. Many people like to say that Superman's infinite mass punch isn't as strong as the Flash's because the Flash can use the speed force and Superman cannot. I, on the other hand, do not care, so I'll give him credit for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Superman can use the uh, infinite mass punch which has the force of 10 octillion tons. Now he's going from what the statement was made by Screwtack. I did talk about this in my video where I stated that they state that it has the a power of White Dwarf Star, but it hasn't shown anything on that level. When he he's only used it really twice. Once against uh, you know, Zoom, I think it was Hunter's Almond Zoom though, he hit him with it and it KO'd him, but it, it didn't kill him. You would think with a punch that hard, it would obliterate him because even though the speedsters, like the Flash characters, do have enhanced, you know, obviously phys uh, physical capabilities, that does not mean their durability is, you know, enhanced. From what I've seen, the Flash and stuff is never shown to have star level durability. He's been getting hit and tanked and hurt by things that weren't star level. We see, you know, Reverse Flash, uh, you know, Earbar Thon's one, he gets hit by a, a metal beam, a steel beam and like construction site by Jay, Gar Jay Garrick's Flash and it actually severely hurts him. And when he fights Batman in the Batcave, Batman's able to stab him through the foot with his battering and punch him and actually make him feel it. Obviously it wasn't enough to take him out, but it was enough to make him feel it. And if they can take or dish out that much amount of power and tank it, then why would that be hurting them? Uh, also, the only other time he used it against White Martian, sending him from America to, uh, I think it was Africa, which is very powerful, but nothing near the White Dwarf Star. Because if you hit with that amount of power, it will create a supermassive black hole and it will obliterate everything in sight. That's how powerful 10 octillion tons of force would be. So yeah, I don't really believe in that, that it's 10 octillion tons of force. I think uh, it isn't really a quantified, uh, you know, a number of power, but I just think it's very inaccurate when it comes to that. Let's 
two-man speed via Batman's Usain Bolt versus Bruce Lee comparisons, we know that there's a difference in travel speed and combat speed, but due to Superman flying to the Andromeda Galaxy as well as fighting Superboy Prime, this feat counts as both tra traverse and combat speed. Now, the one thing I do appreciate about, you know, Batman and DC Comics, they did make a distinct difference between combat speed and travel speed, which some people like Surfbone think that, no, there's no difference between, it's basically the same, which is, is incorrect, that is incorrect of you know anything about fighting, and Batman 100% proved it with his uh, statement. Now, his argument is saying he went to the Andromeda Galaxy holding Super, uh, Superboy. Now, this was when Superboy, you know, first came out and he was fighting against, uh, you know, he was fighting against uh, post-crisis Superman and he was fighting against uh, Golden uh, Golden Age Superman. And they flew him through the Red Sun, crashed on a planet, and then, you know, started to beat him to dry it, uh, depower him so they can, you know, uh, capture him. And his argument is, well, they were moving, uh, you know, they were fighting stuff. But here's the thing, it makes it sound like they were both, you know, clashing, like throwing punches and kicks, like, you know, you see Dragon Ball while they're moving side to side. No, what happened is they grabbed onto him, pushed him, you started flying him out of there and started punching him. That is not the same as, you know, fly, while you're flying, throwing shots and stuff. That is not the same as just grabbing on somebody and punching them. People always equate this as combat speed too, because like, well, he was hitting him and stuff, but it's like, Look at the way he did it. Was he fighting him, fighting him, or was he just grabbing onto him and punching him while he was moving? That is not the same. That is literally not the same. Just because a character can fly and grab onto somebody and hit them does not mean that they can, you know, throw punches and kicks and elbows and, you know, straight up fight at that speed. I don't agree with that. So this one I would 100% disagree with, disagree with, disagree with because of the fact that you know, it's not like he was actually fighting him. He was holding on to him and punching him. Anybody can do that. I can drag somebody and punch them moving on a fast thing. That doesn't mean I can actually hit that fast. So yeah, I disagree with that argument or statement. See right here? And also, they, they did not... They were already close to the Andromeda Galaxy. From what I remember, they didn't go from Earth flying all the way to there. They were, you can see right here in the panels, they're already in outer space while they're moving him. Also, if we're going by that logic, that would mean that uh, Golden Age Superman also can accomplish that feat, which we all know that Golden Age Superman isn't that powerful. He is nowhere near that powerful, so there's no way you can say that for uh, Golden Age Superman also. And if you look at it right here, it, they aren't even fighting. It's actually Superboy Prime who's fighting. They're holding onto him and pushing him, but he's the one punching them to get, him, to get them off of him so they don't fly into the Red Sun. But it's not like they are doing anything. And even if they were, and most would have, what I've seen them usually do when they do this type of stuff, is hold on to the person, fly and punch them, which, once again, is not combat speed. That is That has nothing to do with combat speed. You're not actually throwing shots. Just because you're holding them and flying towards a, a certain speed and just punching them, does not mean you're actually flying that speed. So yeah, I disagree with that statement. Superman flew and fought from Earth to a drama galaxy. I mean, from what it seemed is like they were not on Earth. This occurred within a few days. Considering the galaxy is astonishing 2.5 million light years away, let's assume it's Superman seven days to accomplish this feat. This makes him able to fly and fight 132 million times the speed of light. So yeah, like I said, I'm not trying to argue that he they can't move that fast. They def definitely can move that fast, but I'm saying that they they were not fighting at that speed because what they were doing was would not count as a fight to me. It was them holding on to the person, pushing them, and he was actually doing, he was punching them, so that would be more of Superboy Prime's feet, not them. But even if we did equate it to being their feet, them pulling, pushing him and punching his stuff, he was, they were technically not really fighting. They were just holding on to him, pushing, punching him. It's one thing if, let's say, they were flying after him and then throwing shots and he's throwing shots back, then yeah, I would have agreed. But holding on to him and punching him while he's flying, no. Superman take the full force of Megadon's anti-sun, which could destroy half the galaxy. This adds up to 1.8. Uh, he didn't tank the thing. He absorbed the energy from his core. What it was, was it was an anti-sun uh, energy core. So it would basically, um, I guess, absorb sun and, like, you know, cancel it out or whatever. So for Superman to stop it from, you know, because the thing was going to destroy half the galaxy over it got set off. So for Superman to prevent it, he, he uh, you know, he started absorbing the anti-sun matter which was basically depleting his solar energy. And this is what people equate to, well, he was, you know, uh, if he can absorb that energy that can wipe out a half a galaxy, that means he can tank that amount of energy. But there's nothing to suggest or to, uh, state that 
that was you know the case usually when it comes to absorption and stuff it can be very tricky to find out you know the levels of power just because he can absorb half the power of uh you know a thing that can destroy a uh, galaxy does not mean that that uh that he that you know he had half the power of a galaxy being destroyed within his body i just think that this is a false comparison to make uh like i said he he did not tank it because tanking it means it exploded and he took it and or, or withheld it he just absorbed the energy and it depleted his you know solar uh energy levels to the point where the bomb didn't go active now some people might argue well that still makes him half galaxy level because uh, he was able to absorb the energy that can destroy half a galaxy. But we don't know how this thing works. Just because you're able to absorb the energy source uh, does not mean that you can absorb the total sum of the explosive power that this, you know, machine has. And like I said, absorption works differently. The way, you know, the math works is different than it exploding and taking it. So I don't count this. I will say he has a kind of an argument here, but I won't fully agree with it. Superman lifting 6.6 .6 trillion tons. Now the 6.6 .6 trillion tons, the problem with this argument, one, he tried to make a difference between combat speed and travel speed, but travel speed, uh, but he didn't make that much of a difference between uh, lifting strength and uh, striking strength, even though he says punching is 10 uh, octillion tons, which I'll get into that. I'm just gonna first check out the stats. 6.6 .6, uh, trillion tons of lifting, 10 octillion uh, megatons of punching, 132 million uh, times the speed of light, and 1.19, quadrillion megatons for his durability. First, let's go for the strength, the 6.6 .6 trillion tons. Uh, actually, he could technically lift more than that. The reason why I say this is when Superman was lifting it, he was lifting it, I think he said for five days straight. He was bench pressing the weight of the earth for five days straight and uh, to, you know, test out his, I guess, his energy reserves or his, you know, strength limit. So definitely he has more than that because if somebody can bench press like a certain amount of weight multiple times for a continuous amount of time, that means they can do more than that. It's like, like the best way to do is like their max reps. So like, let's say, uh, he was only able to bench this with one max rep. That would mean that that would be his max lifting strength. But the fact that he was able to do it continuously for five days straight, that means that this is not at his max. If he could only do it one time, then it would be. But he did it multiple times throughout five days, nonstop. So I think he's definitely has, uh, his lifting strength would be definitely above 6.6 .6 octillion tons. Uh, the, uh, the 10 octillion tons of punching power from the infinite mass punch. I already talked about why the infinite mass punch doesn't really equate to that because if it did, it would have destroyed the earth, it would have destroyed the moon, it would have created a black hole. Uh, the two times that we've seen it, Flash used it on another human, he didn't die from it, it just knocked him out for a bit. And yes, you can say, well, he's a speedster and stuff, and he might have this protective aura, but I've already just proven why they're not actually that durable. We've seen them getting hurt by things that would, you know, uh, if you're getting hit by 10 octillion tons and can handle that, you should not be getting hurt by, you know, punches from Batman and stuff. And like most other DC characters do not have that much amount of po uh, hitting power. So they wouldn't be able to deal any real damage to them either, which that isn't true. So I disagree with that. The speed thing, I do agree with speed raw speed alone that that was the case. But combat speed, I already went into that quite a bit. Like they weren't throwing hands and stuff. They were just holding on to it and getting punched. That was it. And this one, the durability one, I think you can have more of an argument for this. But for me, I feel like the fact he one he didn't tank the the explosion did he didn't tank the explosion because to tank it means it exploded and he would stood the explosion but he didn't he just absorbed the energy from the core itself that depleted his power and that stopped it from uh, activating we don't know how this machine works and of uh, the activation uh, set is more powerful because with nukes uh you know the chain reaction that worked for it the uh, plutonium that's in it and uranium and stuff that's inside you know these nuclear warheads they have a lot of power, but they can generate even more power when they detonate because they collide into each other and stuff. And it's like a bunch of science behind it. And that's why it's more uh, dangerous. So I feel like that might be the same case with this, like the anti-star, um, yeah, anti-sun energy might be still powerful, but I don't, it might not be half galaxy level until it is like, you know, released, but he prevented from being released by absorbing it into his, uh, you know, his body. And we don't know how absorption works. like. Uh, does it absorb the total sum of the amount of destructive energy or is it something else? So that I'll say I'm iffy on it on my part, but I don't 100% say that, that this is the case.
For this, we'll assume the hardest material in the Dragon Ball Z universe is harder than and as hard as the hardest material in our universe because the Dragon Ball Z universe is modeled on for ours and be common sense that dictates that something with extremely den extreme density will also be extremely heavy. Thus, Kachin is as heavy or as heavier than a neutron star. Uh, okay, first of all, let's go with this. One, we don't need lifting strength. Lifting strength doesn't matter. It does not equate very well to striking strength. He even showed it with his, you know, calculation for Superman. So that's not very necessary. Uh, two, the Kachin Kachin thing, a lot, or Kachin 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 is the other one. But Kachin thing, people saying that, oh, if it has a high density, then it would ha be, you know, extremely heavy. But that was a uh, correct uh, translation error in the English dub. What it was actually stated was it was the hardest, uh, you know, uh, metal, no metal in the universe. So it was the hardest, not the most dense. Which of you, you can have a very, very hard and tough, you know, uh, I guess you uh, a metal or whatever without it being very very dense now Usually that could be the case like what tungsten tungsten is very heavy very dense one of the most densest uh, Metals in the world and it's very very hard and durable, but there's other ones that are lighter and more and You know hard and durable also, but are not as heavy diamond for, for a fact Yes, it's not a metal, but it's still uh, you know a mineral and this mineral is very very light It's not that heavy yet is one of the hardest, uh, you know, materials in the world. So I don't really fully agree with that. Also, he's stating that this would be equivalent to, an, uh, you know, a neutron star. And there is metal from neutron star where you can make what's called neutronium. And the problem with that, for me, in this case, is two things. One, neutronium is not a solid, like, it's not a purely solid metal form. It doesn't have a pure solid shape. Uh, yeah, shape. There are different states of matter. There is liquid, gas... Uh, uh, you know, solid and uh, plasma, and then you have Bose Einstein condensate. You have these other, you know, uh, f forms of matter. And when you get to the more, like, you, I guess you can say more unconventional means of matter that we don't usually talk about, like, compared to, like, you know, liquid, solid, or um, gas, you get some more unique properties. And you see this more with plasma and Bose Einstein condensate. And uh, I don't know the exact science of neutronium. But I do know it's in one of these more higher levels of uh, states of matter. And what I'm trying to say is why it's not possible is because it's in a specific unique state of matter where it's both a solid and a liquid. So neutronium is a solid and a liquid. So it would be considered, you know, solid and durable, but it also be kind of like a liquid. And the reason why I say that Kachin cannot be a from a neutron star is what it is designed off of. The matter of a Kachin is purely solid it's a solid object there is there's no liquid form to it it's just solid whereas neutronium is solid and a liquid uh in a solid and a liquid state at the same time so there is already a difference between their states it's not the same the same thing also a neutron star not only would it be very heavy but it would have a high level of gravity uh gravitational pull and even if you know Supreme Kai's planet is massive, it can handle the gravitational pull, still the surrounding area around it would still be pulled apart. So if he was holding Kachin Kachin, or I mean Kachin, sorry for the Kachin Kachin stuff, but the Kachin in his hand and throwing it to Goku and stuff, one, Goku catching it would have done more than just, you know, shake the ground, he would have fell through the ground, and two, the gravitational pull would have pulled the rocks apart from it and collided into the thing and, you know, probably been stuck to it. But we don't see that, so I can't really equate it as, you know, Neutron star material. And see, right here. Link to the neutron star in the description. One teaspoon of neutron star is equal to 81 million tons. There are 768 teaspoons in a gallon. We have the scaling. Kachin is 68 inches. Now, I'm using the mathematics, which I do respect. I don't usually do this because I'm not a mathematician. Uh, but, like I stated, uh, when you think about it, it does not make sense for it to be because of the, you know, the gravitational pull that it would have, which they didn't showcase that. And two, the state of matter it would be, this one is purely solid, obviously, as you can tell, whereas neutronium would be a solid and a liquid at the same time. A gallon. So he's saying right here that the cube would be 18.3 trillion tons so basically, base Goku can lift up 18.3 billion tons and toss it casually. And Super Saiyan uh, 4 would be 7.3 quadrillion tons. And Super Saiyan, I mean Super Saiyan 3, 7.3 quadrillion tons. And Super Saiyan 4, 29.36 uh, trillion tons to, you know, 
even him up above Superman. Because Superman had 6.6. Now, like I said, lifting strength doesn't really matter. It's more about how hard he can hit. That's the more important thing than how much you can lift. But also, I don't really agree with the material it is. It could be still as uh, you know very heavy, but I don't know if it'll be that heavy. Uh, and we don't really have you know confirmation on what it is. We can't just say it's it's like a neutron star because it's considered you know the hardest or whatever. After life, I understand that density doesn't always directly correlate to weight, and this category doesn't category really isn't that important anyway. So there's who disagrees? There's another. Yeah, okay. Like I said, I disagree with the Kachin one. If he's going with another, then let's go with the uh, another one. Which is, okay, I've seen this before, which is roughly 52.5 short tons in uh, English Imperial system. So 52.5 uh, short tons uh, is the boulder that he's able to lift and toss it uh, a Gohan. Now in the manga, he does lift this big boulder, but he doesn't toss it. But he does lift it, so this, uh, is, this feat still stands. And the reason why this is important, this feat, is because a lot of people still think that Goku's base is only, four, max is 40 tons because of the whole... You know, afterlife training training thing, which was incorrect. I never liked that. That was uh, power scaling inconsistency in its finest, and that's the one problem with Toriyama is he's better at showing visual feats than uh, numerical feats. When he puts numbers into his feats, it really doesn't really connect as much as his physical ones. Because when he shows it just you know visually, it makes more sense and is more consistent. When he starts adding numbers, it starts you know starting uh, gets more low ended, and this feat alone disproves that. Because he's able to casually lift up uh, 52.5 till uh, you know tons casually, and I'm pretty sure he tosses it with one hand also. Uh, whereas you know when he was wearing the suit, it was only 40 tons, and it was his entire body trying to hold it up, and he was struggling. And on top of it, that was past his max. So 40 tons is even past his max at that point. Twenty thousand eight hundred is Super Saiyan three. Eighty two, eighty three point two million times Super Saiyan four. Even with that rock feed, that is not stating that. From some of you guys were saying, well, that's a small twenty thousand eight hundred uh, uh, eight hundred uh, tons for Super Saiyan three is very small. But just know that that wasn't Goku's uh, max's uh, you know max weight because he wasn't struggling to lift up the rock or throw it. It was still pretty qu casual for him. So don't take this as this is Goku's max, uh, max, uh, you know, strength. It's just that this was, uh, you can consider it as, you know, more of a, a low ball just for the sake of, uh, you know, you know, argument and debates. But yeah, that was him casually doing it. It's just that we haven't seen most, uh, you know, you know, lifting strength and physical strength uh, feats from uh, Goku that we can really quantify. So that's what we go with. But, but I want to re uh, restate that the fact that this does not mean this is Goku's max strength in his base, it's not 52 tons. It's just that from what we've seen, that he can lift up 52 tons. I definitely think he can lift up way more than that still in base. Number one, it's never contradicted. People say Boo took years to destroy hundreds of plants. False. Ignore all training and only adding the Super Saiyan multiplies. Boo could at least bust 400 planets simultaneously. Goku and Super Saiyan 4 could bust a planet bust via manga and anime guys. Not to mention Boo was following the resort. It's not going all out. Yeah, okay. Cell definitely is a soul system buster. If anybody wants to disagree, uh, you're just wrong. Because in the official guides, they even stated that he fired a soul system destroying attack. And Go uh, Gohan was able to deflect that, uh, you know, energy attack. And I think at this point, not that many people really argue that. Unless if you're one of those people who want to downplay Dragon Ball to the max. That's the only type of people I'll see. But most people nowadays, this was back in 2015 where people were more disagreeable about Goku's strength. But nowadays, people really agree that, yeah, he's soul system level. And Boo is multi-soul system level. Some people say galaxy level. I put I cap him off at, uh, you know, high multi-soul system level. But I wouldn't put him uh, at galaxy level. So I was talking about this. Yes, Cell's feats were never contradicted. So there's uh, that doesn't count. Uh, they say it took him uh, hundreds of years. Uh, it took Boo years to destroy hundreds of planets. That was true. They did say it took him a few years. We don't know how many is few or how many is a hundreds. It can be a, 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 a crazy amount. One thing I do want to state that I stated in my uh, Boo is, is a Galaxy Buster video. I talked about the fact that, you know, 
people take only into consideration the plants that he destroyed, but remember what his mission was. It was to systematically wipe out all life in the universe, meaning that he was targeting planets with life on it, meaning that majority of the planets that he would be going to would have no life on it, so he would have no need to destroy it. And why this would matter is because if he's traveling to planets that only have life on it, it will take him more time to, you know, uh, skip and bypass these uh, lifeless planets. Because most, like, most of uh, solar systems have like a, f a handful of planets and in our solar system and from what we found ours is the only one with life though obviously in Dragon Ball is different but even with Dra taking Dragon Ball in consideration I'm pretty, pretty sure that most galaxy star uh, solar systems don't have life and the ones that do have only a few planets with life on it and you know from a uh, solar system to solar system is a couple of light years away so it's quite a big distance so Boo would have to travel from light years to light years and not every cell system that he went to would have life on it so he wouldn't be wasting time there anyway and even the ones that he does would only have like one or two planets with life on it so it would take more time to build up to hundreds of hundreds of planets wiping out than uh you know than him just casually normally wiping out if he was normally wiping out it would be easily it would be easier but the fact that he's systematically targeting ones with life on it makes it more complicated it makes it more harder to do and it makes uh you know the numbers would be a lot smaller because he has to select uh, specific targets so yeah i agree with that he says uh, ignoring all the training yeah i hate when they do that just put the multipliers on it four times planet simultaneously i don't know about that but I could definitely see him be multi solar system and galaxy level. Uh, not to mention who is following Bobby's orders. Yes, I think this is 100% I agree with this too. People say, well, why didn't he just destroy everything? You know, destroy one shot the solar system or, you know, the galaxy and stuff. And my argument to that is, well, he had Bibbidi there and Bibbidi cannot take it. The only way Bibbidi can handle that is if he was astronomically far away from, you know, Boo and allowed him to do that. But that would be dangerous for him because he knows Boo is a loose cannon. And the only thing he has against Boo is his ability to seal him up. But if Boo is too far away, he can kill him from a long distance or just run away. And now this guy is screwed. He's like, oh shit, what did I do? So he always pro possibly wanted to stay close to him so he can use that inc inc incantation. But if he's destroying, you know, so multi soul systems with one shot and galaxies, then he would be in danger. And the only way he can do it is to be far away, and that would ruin his th his plan. So he needed to be in a safe zone. So that makes sense. I agree with that. People say beers can uh, only soul system bust. Incorrect. In the movie, they stated it can destroy. Uh, when he was going to destroy the, you shoot that destruction uh, attack against Goku. It said he was going to go all the way to Pluto which people consider, you know, solar system level, but it never stated that, that was max power, that was just the power he was using to destroy the Earth. He was just using a little bit more to the point where he would destroy the solar system. That does not mean that he was solar system at max. That's just ridiculous to make uh, that statement. He could definitely destroy a galaxy or more than uh, multiple galaxies. I don't know if in the movie I would consider him universal level. Anime definitely made him universal level, but the movie, he could have been multi-galaxy level, but definitely uh, further than uh, solar system level. Yeah, they weren't even that surprised by it either. I finished you guys and say back to the guys energy description. So it's energy blue which had enough force. Yeah, that like I said, uh capable of destroying not just the earth but the entire solar system along with it. Uh I can also make uh is cell a soul system busting uh is is cell a soul system busting uh video because some people still make stupid arguments and I I have a lot of counterpoints to those dumb arguments. Uh but um one thing I do want to talk about is the fact that it was stated in an interview that Toriyama stated that uh, uh Beers could destroy the Supreme Kai's realm and he would have. And this was before Super came out, which the Supreme Kai's realm is one tenth the size of the Dragon Ball macrocosm, not the universe the macrocosm. So that would be significantly bigger than, you know, Soul System. The way he phrases what the word suggested he can do in one shot. Yeah, yeah. And he did state this when he was firing it and holding the common Hamaha to fire its uh, Gohan. He stated that uh, I have more than enough uh, energy to wipe out the solar system. Uh, I think he said, I have enough chi to wipe out the solar system. Meaning that at that time he had enough to just wipe out the solar system. But we see later on when he's fighting his uh, Gohan, he's pouring more and more energy into his attack. So he definitely has more than just solar system level of uh, you know power. So yeah, he, he was already one, he, he stated at that moment he had enough power to destroy the solar system. And we see later on throughout the, uh, you know, his uh, key clash with, uh, you know, Gohan, they start pouring more and more energy. I know in the anime, they, 
they extended that scene longer and made him use more energy and the manga it was less but he still poured quite a bit of energy even in the manga so yeah at that moment he had he was soul system level but he had more than enough power to destroy the soul system so i would say that cell would be soul system plus and so would uh, gohan beyond that because he was able to match it and surpass it yeah I don't know if that math uh, uh, it is how much it takes to destroy, you know, the solar system is 50 octane megatons of force. It could be true, but I don't know if uh, it's just the case. Sorry, I'm canonically wrote it. Yeah, I hear you DC fans. He also wrote that Birdo was the fastest in the universe. The two scenarios are completely different. That's the problem. Birdo was intimidated, thus led to try and make himself seem fa Seemed better if he actually was. So it was in control and I had no reason to lie. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. People keep on saying that. They say that for Vegeta too. And like, oh, well, he lied about this. He 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 said he was a Super Saiyan stuff. That's not the same. That's not... How are you equating that as the same? He's saying that he has the feet to do this. Uh, if he didn't, they would have called it out. That would have just been bullshit. They would have just called out. Attacks are uh, concentrated. People like to say the cell isn't a social and must be just beamed in even destroy the planet. True... That'd be true if Tax and Dragon Zoom weren't concentrated. Examples we know Vegeta was a fine version in season two, and then we know Rakuma is much stronger than him, thus logically. I mean, yeah, it's just key control. Uh, the planet I can destroy, obviously, if the planet got destroyed, what the hell would be the point? The whole point of Gohan combating back against the attack was to save the Earth and the solar system. Of it just ended up destroying it anyway, then he would have failed. That's stupid. Uh, also, he fired it off and angled it in a correct way. That's why. He he moved it off of planet. So yeah, we've seen this. Also, I mean, throughout the uh, Android arc and the Cell Saga, we saw how dangerous their power was that any uh, time they fired an attack, they could destroy the planet. But later on, you know, we see the Boo Saga them firing the same attacks in the planet and it didn't destroy it. Why? Because they learned how to control it better later on. Because at this point, they, they had full like you know they've been having planet destroying attacks for a while so they're used to it Superman was the least cold just hit Superman with the force of 15 suns yet the mood there fighting on isn't even destroyed Yeah, but with that, for the, the at least one, the one problem I had with that is that was actually never present in the comics. I actually read the comics, and he never had that uh, that statement where it was like the uh, explosion of fifteen explosive suns. And if you watch the movie, they were fighting against creatures that were nowhere near that durable. And guess what? He was struggling to obliterate them, and he had to use quite a bit of power to do so. So if he had the power of fifteen explosive suns, he wouldn't be uh, struggling to destroy these weaker creatures. Uh, compared to Superman. Also, that was more of a hyperbolic statement, I could argue, because he didn't show anything of that level to be, you know, uh, 15 exploding suns. So that's more of a hyperbolic statement for me. What said was moving on to a strong glow punches. Uh, by the Newton's Law, we know that Cell outputs his durability 15 or 10. Super perfect Cell power was stated to be like Sun Gohan's. He even has the electric power. Okay, perfect Cell remains the mind the ghost power, but even less. Perfect Cell is super sane. This means... I mean, well, Perfect Cell was using half his power against Goku, and he was obviously messing around. And, you know, if he went full on, he could have, you know, easily beaten Goku. This means... Uh, super Cell is perfect. 25 off 20 times. I guess so. I wouldn't say they're exactly as strong as he is, because if they were, then, you know, that would be ridiculous of he created Cell Juniors as strong as him. But they were quite powerful. I mean, they were able to handle, uh, uh, they were able to handle Super Vegeta and Super Trunks, who were bodying second form uh, uh, Cell. And even one caught uh, Vegeta's final flash and kicked it away. So that just showcases their power. And they're beating up everybody. So yeah, they're quite powerful, but I wouldn't say exactly as him. In the in the anime, the, in the manga, they didn't disintegrate them; they just got splattered. So, but still, it's still impressive feat. Thus, Base Gohan could punch with a force of two hundred fifty septillion megatons. What he's doing right here is he's multiplying the the amount of what's the thing called, 
uh, their durability times, you know, how many he wiped out, but that's not how it works. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. That's not how it works. Also, he stated the durability and the attack points is the same as the news. Their law, uh, Screw Attack also, uh, Death Battle also stated this. Uh, I've already debunked this. We know that in Dragon Ball, their attack points is higher than their durability, and they can increase it. I wouldn't say by a ridiculous amount, but at least a couple of times more than how much they can tank. So no, just because he's wiping them out to have a certain level of durability does not mean uh, you know their durability is equivalent to their amount of attack power uh, potency. So it wouldn't be exactly, it would be well, quite a bit smaller, but not significantly smaller. You can see that Goku increases his power by 11.25 times in just 6 days of training, yet for his training in the other world, I'm going to assume the 1.1 This should estimate a controversial assumption that Goku can punch as hard as Gohan, 7 times 7, 1.93 octillion megatons in base, 770 octillion megatons in Super Saiyan 3, and 3.1 decillion uh, megatons in uh, Super Saiyan 4. Uh, like I said, I don't know about the math of that is 100% correct because even the durability and stuff like that, I don't know if they go exactly with it, but he could have, you know, a decent argument there. Folks, we always have to do different things. I was going to speak these kinds of problems for this. I want to count Superman says, because let's be honest, Superman does not have the martial arts or fighting prowess to be on, you know, as good as a fighter as he is, as just moving. We know that for you to have combat speed that's equivalent or close to your travel speed, you would have to be also really good at fighting, which Superman is not. He's not a martial artist, so his wouldn't be that level. And every time we see Superman fight, he's never shown to have uh, speed on that level when it comes to combat. Only time he's shown to have ridiculous speed is when he's just flying or you know running up to a place. No Goku three. Kid Buu is about to destroy the Earth in an attempt to stop him. Could be to use instant transmission to get the fight to before Goku probably at least before and Kid Buu launches an attack. It doesn't appear until the attack has uh, long launched. Unless the premises of one instant transmission is alive, Kid Buu launch his attack within an instant. Now, there's a lot of arguments about what is instant. You know, the whole, uh, you know, Surf Bone talked about the fact that it is, you know, a light particle uh, moving in a plank distance, which is an astronomically uh, short amount of time, uh, which isn't literally instant. Though I I suggest that as long as it is you know of 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 it's written in fiction they state that the scientific term then yes we will go by the scientific term but a lot of times these writers are not scientists and they don't go by the scientific terms they might think that it is instant so that I don't really fully agree with but um, I of that did happen then that would just mean that you know the scientific term so he's saying well, unless there's a different instant what well, there is you know from what's been argued but even if we put that into consideration saying oh you know it's you know a scientific t uh, termination of uh you know a light particle moving uh you know plank distance that is still insanely fast to the point where that would break uh you know that would legit break uh what's thing called uh the uh, physics itself but one thing i do want to say about that is one it's probably cinematic timing that made it seem like that because a lot of times cinematic timing can mess with the perception of timing in Dragon Ball. And two, it might be Toriyama wasn't really literally thinking that way. They're like, oh, I'm going to showcase his, his attack is this fast. I think it was just, you know, trying to build up more tension to be like, look at how tense this situation is and look at uh, how dire it is. They have to get out of there at that moment or they're done for. Since Goku has the speed to react to and run away from the ball, we could conclude here and say that Goku has instantaneous fighting and travel speed. But in DC Comics, we've seen characters like The Flash and even Superman run in an instant. Here's the problem with that, stating that Goku can do that. Because if he can do that, then what's the point of using instant transmission? You're telling me he can travel and fight at, you know, instantaneous uh, speed? Then why the hell would he need instant transmission? <laughs> that would make instant transmission pointless. If, a, if Goku can move in, instant, in an instant, then there will be no point of instant transmission. The moment where Goku does move at that speed, that will be the time when Goku doesn't use instant transmission anymore or has no uh, use for it. Because then he can go from another planet to uh, one planet to another instantly. And some people might be like, well, you know, he needs to breathe. But if you can move that fast, you can move uh, to another place without even having to take one breath. So I don't agree with that. If he was that fast, like I said, he wouldn't need the instant transmission. 
Also, these people take these words to a literal half an instant. This is more of a hyperbolic statement. There's no such thing as half an instant, even by the scientific term, because the amount of uh, you know time it takes for a light particle to go across a Planck distance, there is no cutting in that. Once you get to that small of a level, you can't you know cut the time any shorter. That is what it is. If you cut it any shorter, then it breaks the laws of physics and is you know underneath that. But yeah, half an instant later. These are just words. They don't mean anything. Unless they have been proven, then yes, but they don't mean anything just because it says half an instant later. Usually they just mean uh, instant or stuff. It just means incredibly fast, um, you know, my speed. It doesn't always mean literal. So continuous speed calculation mathematics believe an instant is equivalent to an out of second. No, an out of second is not an instant. An instant is way faster than an out of second. Think of the smallest possible amount of uh, seconds you can find, and that's what it would be. An out of second, or like, you know, a Planck second. Because an out of second is quite, it's very small, but still quite off of that. And I think uh, that's how fast light travels at, is in out of seconds. But yeah, an out of second, no. That is completely lowballing uh, that if it was instant. I'm not saying it is, but if it was instant, that's completely lowballing it. Because to move at an instant, and there's no such thing as half, but moving an instant, you would be at the uh, the smallest possible amount of a second, which an hour seconds at. Yeah, see, he said light moves at an hour seconds, yet boost attacks travel at at least 30 feet. Blah, blah, math, okay. Goku must have traveled at 29 miles, uh, 29 million uh, light years, or uh, times light. So 232, yeah, like I said, uh, the, these calculations, he, he now he went to it being light speed, uh, going through light speed instead of instant, which is more reasonable, but like, it doesn't make sense the comparison now he's doing. Seven, five million years ago, beers could have destroyed the cash. Yeah, like I said, that's true. People try to debunk this with a scale of the map. Yeah, that's incorrect too. And we've definitely seen it now with, you know, super. People other try to say that he didn't mean one shot. First off, when dudes you can hear it's not even in one shot. Also, why would they say that it was not one shot, then it's not impressive? Or they would have stayed it through time. Uh, second, the fact that Buhan could have destroyed the entire universe by screaming gives credibility to Beerus' feet. Assuming he got 10 times stronger than the 75 million years, that's just a joke now by heating universe buster. Um, you know, him destroying uh, Buhan, destroying the galaxy, the universe, like I said, he was destroying the dimensional walls and it was collapsing in and of itself. It's not he was technically destroying the universe, he was just destroying the barriers between the universes uh, or realities. Um, he's saying Beerus, and we know that Goku is 60% of power of Beerus, which that is no longer the case uh, nowadays, which means Goku is 60 billion galaxies. Um, that's also not correct. Uh, I, I've talked about this before, but there are two trillion galaxies in our in the universe. So technically, if it was sixty percent of that, it would be sixty percent of two trillion, not not one hundred billion. So yeah, that's in, that's just mathematically uh, wrong. But yeah, I do agree with that. Uh, if that's the case. So his Goku's lifting strength, which doesn't matter, twenty nine six trillion uh, megatons. Megatons? Lifting strength? Megatons? Uh, that's incorrect. Megatons are not measured for lifting. They are measured for destructive force, like a nuke or an explosion or TNT and stuff. Because it, megatons is going by stuff of TNT. That's what they do for nukes. Like um, like the nuclear warhead, uh, the biggest one, Star Bomba, was 50 megatons, which would mean it was 50 megaton uh, million tons of TNT. So that's how you go with it. So lifting strength is megatons, doesn't really make sense. It would just be sextillion, uh, six, uh, 29 sextillion, uh, me, uh, just tons. So yeah, that's incorrect. 3.1 trillion, yeah. Half a galaxy, and he's saying that much. 60 million galaxies. But he was going for Super Saiyan 4 Goku, right? He's saying he's going for, that makes no sense. It's very inconsistent. He said he's going for Super Saiyan 4 Goku, but then he's using the speed and I think the durability from beer, uh, from Battle of Gods, which is not connected to GT and does not have Super Saiyan 4. Yes, he said he's not going with, uh, you know, continuity stuff, but still, it's just weird. So, yeah, once again, big shout out to uh, the Tanner Nation for, you know, his comment on my video. I will be checking out his newest one, but for his older one, I'll say that he does have some good points, but for the whole, as a whole, I think a lot of the information is incorrect on both sides, on both Goku and Superman. I think he got a lot of stuff, uh, 
wrong. And that's not to say, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. It's just that it felt like back then, at least, he was he had a lot of misinformation. Some stuff I will say I can understand where he's come from, but I just don't fully agree with uh, his statements. So, yeah. Uh, that's the end for this video. I will be dropping out my Dragon Ball Super Superheroes uh, power scaling video next. So stay tuned for that, guys, and uh, see you guys next time.